Bible says that we can be called friends of God. God, aren't you grateful to be his friend this morning and to call him friend today? It's so good to see you this morning. Welcome to Rock Springs Church. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for choosing to be with us this morning. We realize that you could have gone anywhere today. You probably passed 10 churches on your way here, but you're here. And for that, we are so grateful. If you're visiting with us today, thank you for coming. 
we appreciate you and you are our honored guest. We don't ask anything of you as a visitor except that you would just look in that pew back in front of you there and there's a card that says welcome to Rock Springs. If you would take a minute and fill out some information on that card and drop it in the offering bag as it passes your way here in just a minute, we'd be so thankful for that. It's simply a record of you being here. We don't want to miss you. Uh, we don't want to miss anybody. If you're joining us online today via rockspringslive.com, we appreciate you joining us today. Folks, we also have people joining us live today at all of our other campuses, the Branch down at Macon and Forsyth and Griffin at Impact Christian Ministries. Can we go ahead and just let them know how thankful we are that they're joining us live today? We're going to continue to worship the Lord and continue to sing praises to Him. He's the reason that we're here. We've come today to worship Him, and we would like Him to join us. So we're going to pray and ask Him to just join us with His presence this morning. But before we do that, if you've got a need on your heart, would you signify that to him? Folks, there are hands all over. And these hands represent needs. And we know each and every one of you have a need. But our God can meet that need. Don't you believe that this morning? Our God can meet that need, whatever you're going through. So we're going to pray and ask him to come and meet needs today. So let's do that this morning. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for today and the opportunity to worship you. God, I pray that you would just... Meet the needs that were represented by hands all over this room today. We believe you for big things this morning. I pray that you would touch hearts and lives and that you would change us today. I pray that we would all leave here differently than we came in. Lord, now join us today with your presence. Be with us this morning as we sing these praises to you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're going to do this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Would you stand again this morning and sing with us? Oh, 
praise our hearts. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Cause great, cause great, great are you, Lord. Are you, Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Cause great, cause great, great is our Lord. the voices all over. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. We pour out our praise to you. Amen. Amen.
folks, that's why we've gathered. We've gathered here to exalt the Lord. No other reason other than that than to praise and magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. I thank you so much for being here. would like to remind all of our women that every Tuesday we have a Bible study at 12 o'clock. Last five or six weeks, it's a study on the book of Philippians, one of my favorite books in the Bible, taught by a great teacher. Ladies, if you'd like to be a part of it, just come here every Wednesday uh, for about five or six weeks. I think we're in week three, but it's called uh, Lunch and Learn, a study of the book of Philippians. Also, for all of our men, we're trying to do something extra for our men. This Wednesday morning, I'll be uh, down at the Dairy Queen in Versailles. We have a breakfast from 8 to 8.30, and then I'll be teaching a lesson that I've never taught before. Our men here, and I'll be teaching a lesson to all the men about 8.30. If you want to come, we'd love for you to come. I'll let you buy my breakfast, and we'll have a good time. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Folks, I'm going to pray, and then we all get to give to the Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, whether people are streaming this service or they're in one of our campuses, I pray you'll bless this offering. I pray you bless the people that give. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
There are days of taking more than I can give And there are choices that I've made That I wouldn't choose again I've had my share of laughter Of tears and troubled times This has been the story of my life Cause I have won And I have lost Right sometimes and sometimes I did not. Life's been a burden, I've seen joy, I've seen regrets. Oh, but you have been my God through all of it. You were there when it all came down on me. I was blinded by my fear. As I struggle to believe But in this unclear moment You are the one keeping me strong This is how my story's always gone Cause I have won And I have lost I got it right sometimes And sometimes I did not Life's been my journey I've seen joy, I've seen regrets. Oh, but you have been my God through all of it. Ooh, through all of it. And this is who you are, more constant than the stars of in the sky. All the years of my life I, I look back and I see you right now I still do and I'm always going to I have won and I have lost I got it right sometimes and sometimes I did not Life's been a journey, I've seen joy, I've seen regrets. Oh, you have been my God through all of it. You have been my God through all of it. And you have been my God through all of it. He has been here since the beginning and will always be. He comes like the blowing of a violent wind. He comes like a dove in lightning. He moves upon people and they receive power. He speaks to us and through us. His baptism comes not with water, but with fire. He is at one with the Father and Son, yet separate. This is the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the forgotten God. Well, good morning, and thank you so much for being here. I especially appreciate our people in the branch being so faithful to worship the Lord there week in, week out. And I'm grateful for all that God is doing. I've been preaching a series of messages entitled, The God We Sometimes Forget. You know, folks, most of you, many of you grew up in church, and you learned about God. And uh, you grew up in church, and you learned a lot about Jesus. But most of us didn't learn a whole lot about the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know something. The Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus is God. He's just as much God as God is God. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So we've taken several weeks, and we've been looking at the Holy Spirit, the God that we sometimes forget. You know what we ought to all do even right now, folks? If you're saved, you ought to thank the Holy Spirit. Yes, you ought to thank the Holy Spirit. Because 
you can't be saved outside of the Holy Spirit. What caused you to acknowledge your need for a Savior? You said, oh, no, Pastor Ben, it was my mom, it was my dad. No, no, it was the Holy Spirit. That's what caused us to acknowledge the need for Jesus. The Holy Spirit, Spirit dealt with our heart. So I want to talk to you today about the Holy Spirit. I want you to take your Bible and go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Notice what the Scripture says. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let us pray. Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts in your presence, God, I pray today that you will speak to us and through us. Holy Spirit, I pray today that you come. I pray today that you meet the needs of beautiful, beautiful people. God, this is your service. <laughs> this is your service. Lord, it's, it's about us meeting with you. So certainly, we invite you. We want you to come. We need you, Lord. I pray today that you will meet the needs of this hour, and for all you do at the end of this day, I'll bow my unworthy head and I'll praise you, for I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Until you come, we pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments, and I want to talk to you about how is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? How is your relationship with with the Holy Spirit. And when I say your relationship, that tells me, ladies and gentlemen, that the Holy Spirit is not a force. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not enthusiasm. The Holy Spirit is not energy. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. You say, well, Brother Benny, he's a, he's a living thing. Well, a, a tree's a living thing, amen? But a tree's not a person. A person has a mind, a person has a will, and a person has emotions. And the Holy Spirit, He's a person. He has a mind, He has a will, He has emotions. I love what Billy Graham said. Billy Graham said, we shouldn't refer to the Holy Spirit as it. <laughs> Instead, we should always refer to the Spirit as He. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. He speaks to us. He commands us. He intercedes for us. He hears us. And He guides us. Now, folks, before you think, rule me and check out. I want you to know something. God's on the throne. Jesus Christ is at his right hand. It's the Holy Spirit that's here with us. God's agent on earth is the Holy Spirit. So it might be good, ladies and gentlemen, if we get to know the Holy Spirit. It might be good for us to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he's the one that's here for us. Now, I began to think about this thought. How's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? And I'm convinced concerning the Holy Spirit and our relationship, there are two things with the Holy Spirit that we shouldn't do. And then there are two things that I am convinced concerning our relationship with the Holy Spirit that we should do. The first thing that I want you to see, folks, that we should not do concerning our relationship with the Holy Spirit is we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what's interesting. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So that tells me, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I 
as mortals, as Christians, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, the word grieve means to deeply sadden. Deeply sadden. How many of you, since you've been a Christian, there was a time in your life that you sinned? Amen? Now listen, if the person beside you did not raise their hand, take one arm and put it around your wife and put your other hand on your wallet. Sure, we have all sinned. And you know when you sin, you feel bad about it. And you think, well, that's my conscience. That's not your conscience. That's the Holy Spirit in your life. And the Holy Spirit is deeply saddened, ladies and gentlemen, when we sin. He's deeply saddened. And that's why we feel that guilt. That's why we feel that remorse. We have literally grieved the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what's so amazing. When the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, it goes on, and before that verse and after that verse, it tells us what we do as Christians that grieves the Holy Spirit. First of all, our morality, or perhaps I should say lack of it, grieves the Holy Spirit. Notice what Ephesians says in Ephesians 4 and 24, 25. It says, Wherefore put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbors, for we are members one of another. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, when we don't tell the truth, it grieves the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life? When we're not honest, it grieves the Holy Spirit. I read a story one time about Miss Lillian Carter. Miss Lillian Carter was the mother of President Jimmy Carter, and she wasn't much for reporters. And really, she wasn't much for female reporters. And a female reporter came down out of Washington to interview her one time. This elderly lady and the reporter walked in the house and Miss Lillian said to the lady, good to see you and you look so nice. And then that reporter being somewhat abrasive said, did your son Jimmy Carter growing up ever tell a lie? She said, well, I don't know about that. He probably told a little white lie. And the reporter said, well, what is a little white lie? And Miss Lillian said, you remember when you walked into my house? I said you looked nice, and it was glad to, I was glad to see you. Well, folks, I don't know about a lie. I don't know about a little white lie. But I do know this. When we're not honest, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When we're not honest, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When we don't tell the truth, when we embellish, it grieves the Holy Spirit. It's not pleasing to the Lord. So we grieve the Holy Spirit with our morality. But we grieve the Holy Spirit with our mood. You say, what are you talking about? Well, look what he said in verse 26. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Let me tell you something. If you have a problem with somebody, 24 hours, you need to get it worked out. What did he say? Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Husbands and wives, I'll simplify it. He said, don't go to bed upset at each other. Don't go to bed upset at each other. He said, get it right. Two people can't be right with God and wrong with each other. Now, don't sit on me when I'm preaching good. 
I mean, folks, it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves. Let me, let me tell you something. When I'm running around with bitterness and malice and strife in my heart against somebody else, don't think the Holy Spirit's flowing in my life. It doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. I want to report to you today, unequivocally, two people can't be right with God and wrong with each other. Two people can't be right with God and wrong with each other. I want you to know something. Our morality, our mood... It grieves the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you something else. It grieves. By the way, folks, am I, am I preaching the Bible? Is that what we came for? Now, not only does our morality and our mood grieve the Holy Spirit, but listen, our money grieves the Holy Spirit. Look what he says. Let him that st- stole steal no more, <laughs> but rather let him labor. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm not hard. I'm all for people that have fiscal problems and physically unable to work. My heart goes out to them. Or emotionally unable to go to work. Or mentally unable to work. My heart goes out to them. My heart goes out. But hear me clearly. The, 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 The man that's able to work and won't work, it's not pleasing to God to take money from a man who will work and give it to a man who won't work. Somebody said to me the other day, no, it's in another state, so don't try to figure it out who it is. It's in another state. Somebody said to me the other day, in another state, I quote, I've got a 20-year-old living here and he won't work. And they call me about it. You've got a 20-year-old 20 20 living here, and he won't work, and you don't know what to do about it. I just don't know what to do about it. Let me tell you something. If he gets hungry enough, if you quit feeding him, he'll go to work. But as long as you're feeding him, he's not going to go to work. And you're enabling him, and you're not right with God when you do that. Amen, Benny. Good preaching. No, you're enabling him. If he gets hungry enough, he'll go to work. You say, well, Pastor Benny told me to let him starve to death. No, Pastor Benny didn't tell you that. The Word of God said that, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Let him starve to death, and he'll go to work. Let him that stole steal no more, but let him labor, working with his hands that which is good. Let me tell you something else that grieves the Holy Spirit that he may give to them that needeth. Don't tell me, folks, you're just so flowing with the Holy Spirit. You're just so flowing with the Holy Spirit, but you're the cheapest guy in town. No, 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 no. You're quenching. Let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. You can, I wonder, I want to ask you something. Jesus is going to come back one day, and he's not impressed with all of your money in the bank. He's not even, you need to pour that money into people. You say, Pastor Benny, do you have have large savings in the bank? No, I don't. I've given my life. I've given my resources to help people. Jesus is not impressed when he comes back if I've got all this money. We need to pour that into helping people. You say, well, I'm saving it for my kids. They'll blow it 30 minutes after you're gone. I may not get past point one. (laughs) We should not grieve the Holy Spirit. And folks, when we don't do right concerning morality, when we don't do right concerning our moods, when we don't do right concerning our money, it grieves the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you something else. (sighs) When we don't do right concerning our mouth... Listen, I'm just preaching the book. (laughs) Isn't this good? Look what he says. What grieves the Holy Spirit? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. There's nobody any more for marriage than Benny Tate's for marriage. There is nobody for life any more than I'm for life. Wait, 
I'm 51. And Barbara has taught me in too. When babies are born in adoption agencies, that birth mother has 10 days to change her mind. So they need a home for babies for 10 days. And our home's going to become the home. Now, how am I going to sleep with these babies crying all night? <laughs> There's nobody any more for life than I'm for life. But let me tell you something, folks. Those are not the issues that's hurting the church. What's hurting the church, folks, is we tear each other apart vocally. We talk about each other. When somebody's going through a hard time, we talk about them rather than lifting them up. Pastor was invited, invited home for a family to have lunch. And he said to the young boy, as they were getting the lunch ready, Son, what are we having for lunch today? The boy said, Goat. He said, Goat. He said, Yes. I heard my daddy say to mom, Today's as good as any other day to have the old goat over. We should not grieve the Holy Spirit, but let me tell you something else, folks. We should not quench the Holy Spirit. We should not quench the Holy Spirit. Look what 1 Thessalonians says. It says, quench not the Spirit. You know what that means, folks? That literally means to dampen the flame. And I don't want to, I'm not going to camp long on this point. I've got to move. But see, folks, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And you can fan the flame or you can dampen the flame. And you know what a fan the flame? I'll tell you what a fan the flame, reading your Bible. I'll tell you what a fan the flame, make sure every day you've got a place and a time where you pray. I'll tell you what a fan the flame is get up every morning and say, it's not about me today, I want to do for somebody else. It's not about me. We've heard about your problems. Everybody knows about them. But it's not about you. It's about somebody else. It's not about what you can get. It's about what you can give to somebody else. That fans the flame. You know what else will fan the flame? It's when you faithfully come to the house of God. Because you worship God and you hear the word of God. Now there's two things that we're told not to do. Don't grieve the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. But let me quickly give you two things that we're supposed to do. Number one, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. We should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice what Ephesians 5 and 18 says. Folks, these were people that were devout Christians. He said, be not drunk with wine but be ye filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Spirit. You, you, you preach about this, and it scares people. And they say, Brother Benny, I'm, it's scary. The people that are fanatical. I'd rather cool down a fanatic than warm up a corpse. And we need to be Filled with the Holy Spirit. See, folks, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. And let me tell you about this Christian life. I've been trying to do it, folks, since I was 16, 35 years. And if you survive in the Christian life, there'll be time and time again that you have to come and say, God, I empty myself of myself and fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. You say, well, I'm, I'm a Baptist. Well, God will forgive you of that. That's not what I'm talking about. 
Friend, the Baptists need the filling of the Spirit. The Methodists need the filling of the Spirit. The Pentecostals need the filling of the Spirit. Over and over and over and over again, we need a fresh filling of God's presence. Folks, this is not a suggestion. It's not something God said you might want to do. He said, be ye filled with the Spirit. It's the, the Christian life is not, it, folks, it's not difficult without this. The Christian life is impossible. It's impossible without being filled with God's presence and God's spirit on a continual basis. If you read Acts 2 and 4, the people were filled with the spirit. And if you read Acts 4 and 31, the same people were filled again. And that tells me, ladies and gentlemen, we're leaky vessels, and we need God's presence, and we need God's touch. Let me tell you something, folks. What we need more than anything is we need the presence of God. And we should, folks, we should design our services. Somebody said we got to design our services to attract people. Let me tell you what we need to do. We need to design our services to attract God. And if we attract God, we will attract the people more than anything we need the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm faced with a decision right now, a major decision in my life. Now, get this blown out of your head. I'm not leaving the church. Get that out of your head. But I'm faced with a major decision. How am I going to get guidance? Only the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he'll guide you in all truth. Not God, not Jesus, but I need the Holy Spirit, folks. Well, I can't lead this church without being led by the Holy Spirit. We can't do what we need to do without being led by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we desperately need you. And God's telling every one of us to be filled with the Spirit. And then he tells us something else. He says, not only... Are you to be filled with the Spirit? But he said, I want you to walk in the Spirit. Now, God showed me something, folks. If you, if you walk, what are you doing? You're depending on the next step. You're depending on the next step. And to walk in the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is to depend upon the Holy Spirit. See, the Christian life is not about determination. It's about dependence. <laughs> no, no. And you say, oh, so-and-so is so strong. No, no, no. Not any of us are so strong. It's the Holy Spirit inside of us. No, no. Nobody's any stronger than you. Nobody's any better Christian than you. It's just a matter, ladies and gentlemen, of how much we're going to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Because the Christian life is not about trying, it's about trusting. It's about trusting the Holy Spirit. It's about walking in the Holy Spirit. Now, he tells us, folks, and I'm almost done. Thank you, brother. He tells us to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And while you're walking in the Spirit... There's some things that's going to come at you. <laughs> now, Galatians 5 and 16 says, walk in the Spirit. But while you're walking in the Spirit, <laughs> you're in this fleshly body. This may be the most important thing I preach, so get this, folks. While you are walking in the Spirit, you're in this fleshly body, and the works of the flesh will come at us. And as we get down to verse 19, he tells us what some of those works are. He says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Adultery, that's physical relationship outside of marriage. Fornication, that's relationship before marriage. Let me tell you something, folks. I, I, I know it's the 21st century, but God still says, that a young man and a young woman are to keep themselves pure for marriage. Adultery, fornication, 
uncleanliness, pornography. One out of four hits on the computer from men are to a pornographic site. 57% men, pornographic sites. Lasciviousness, which is immodesty. Idolatry, witchcraft. That word, folks, listen to me, comes from the Greek word pharmakia. We get the word pharmacy, drugs. I'm not only talking illegal drugs, I'm talking about prescription drugs. I know people that are controlled by drugs. They're not even themselves, they're controlled by drugs and they've got a prescription for every one of them. And then some people, it's just drugs. Hatred, hatred, variance, which is discord, emulation, which is jealousy, wrath, strive, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revealings. What is revealings? It's drinking celebrations. It talks to us about all those. Wait, wait. While you're walking in the Spirit, we encounter these works of the flesh. And folks, I want to be transparent with you. I have been walking in the Spirit and encountered works of the flesh. You say, well, Brother Benny, when you look at these sexual sins, spiritual sins, social sins, how, how do we overcome them? What's amazing, folks? Notice the word there is works. Works. This is what I know about works. I can do work. I went out in my garden yesterday. Pray for my garden. <laughs> I went out in my garden yesterday and pulled a cucumber. I did some work. Work we can do. Works of the flesh we can do. But notice what the scripture says in Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit. <laughs> you can do work. But you can't produce fruit. Produce an apple, Leroy. Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing in John 15 and 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. So what's the answer for the works of the flesh? The answer for the works of the flesh is the fruit of the Spirit. And what's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So how can I overcome those things that are pulling me down? Ladies and gentlemen, here's how we overcome them. We come to ourselves and we say, God, empty me of myself and fill me with your spirit. As our musicians are coming, I want to tell you a story. I heard about a business that caught on fire. Large fire departments came. They were hosing down the building from the outside. They were hosing it down, not having much success. But there was a county, two counties over, 
who had one old fire truck. And they started, that one old fire truck started coming down the hill toward that massive fire. Busted through the building. Got inside and pulled out the hose and started spraying and put the fire out. Two days later, the owner of the business said, I want to reward them. I want to give them a $10,000 check. The press came. And he presented the $10,000 check to the fire chief. And the fire chief just had one other fireman on the staff. And they asked the fire chief, what are you going to do with the $10,000? He said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the brakes fixed on the fire truck. Now, here's what I know. Victory in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't come from hosing down the outside. We can hose down the outside trying to make up for what's missing on the inside. But as long as you're hosing down the outside, you're not going to have victory. How we're going to have victory is when we get the living water inside when we get the living water. That's how we don't have victory outside in. We have victory inside out. And how can I have a victory and how can I overcome this? It's through in being filled with God's presence and God's spirit. Just a moment. Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking. Brother Benny, there's something in my life. It controls me. It may cause you to grieve the Holy Spirit. It may just be a stronghold in your life. But, Pastor Benny, there's something in my life. And, Pastor Benny, it controls me. Please pray for me and you raise your hand. Hands up all over. Hands up all over. I wonder who's here today and say, Brother Benny, I, I've, I don't know that I'm right with God. I don't know that the Holy Spirit's even inside me. I don't know that if I died, I'd go to heaven. But, Brother Benny, I want you to pray for me. And you slip your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. I just want you to pray for me. Listen to me very closely. If you raise your hand that you don't know you're right with God, you say, I don't know that I'm right with God, Pastor Benny. Pray this prayer with me. Just repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. But God, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died for my sin. And I confess them to you right now. Come into my life, Lord. And forgive me. Now, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you for coming into my life. If you prayed that prayer, hold your hand up real high. Hold it up. Yes. Just keep your hand up. Just keep your hand up. Yes, just keep your hand up. Just keep your hand up. I prayed that prayer. Just keep your hand up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Folks, I want us to stand. I want every person to stand. Pastor Ricky is going to lead us today. Thank you for joining us today. I trust you found this service to be inspiring and encouraging. If you made the decision and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or you just would like prayer, feel free to contact us. There's an email address at the bottom of your screen, and we look so forward to hearing from you. May God bless you, and we can't wait to see you next week.